Over time, more and more people have been living in urban areas, as they've left the country in forests and formed cities. Often nowadays, we complain that a lot of cities are basically the same with the same stores and the same fashions and the same people. But not everywhere has turned out this way, at least not yet. There are still some very weird cities out there in the world. From the city in China, where everyone is super rich, to the city under siege from cuddly little bunnies, here's the 20 wildest cities around the world. Number 20. Every resident is a millionaire, the wealthiest village in China. Huaxi, dubbed the richest village in China, was built by a man who died in March. However, the tranquil rural town he assisted in transforming into a communist utopia continues to assert its strength. The majority of the information we have on the hamlet, which Wu Renbao, former secretary of the Haoxi Village Communist Party Committee created, comes from media rumors or Wu Renbao's own statements. According to the China Chronicle, the initial registered residents are even prohibited from speaking to outsiders of the media. But here's the truth. Every resident is a millionaire, the wealthiest village in China. There's a widespread belief that the descendants of the original inhabitants of the so-called model socialist hamlet are entitled to remarkable benefits, such as free healthcare, education, opulent houses, automobiles, and at least 250k in their bank accounts. We also know that the hamlet is home to a world park that has a miniature version of some of the most famous monuments in the world, including the Statue of Liberty, Arc de Triomphe, as well as brand new gleaming skyscrapers that rank as China's 15th tallest structure. However, rumors claim that life is not as picture-perfect as Hua Xi would have tourists think. There's a rigid hierarchy between the 2,000 registered residents of the village, many of whose families date back to the 1950s, and newcomers to Hua Xi, who are paid standard wages and don't share in some of the same free luxuries like healthcare, car, and property. Residents allegedly work seven days a week, frequently in Hao Xi's industrial plants. In addition, the original Hao Xi inhabitants lose everything if they leave. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The small island city being overrun by rabbits. A little island called Kunoshima is located in Japan's inland sea. Its circumference is a little over 2.5 miles, which can be covered on foot in about an hour and a half. The area is green and dotted with piers, a beach resort, and scenic lookouts. Except for the hundreds of feral European rabbits that wander the island, not many people call this tourist attraction home. Kunoshima, sometimes known as Rabbit Island, has grown in popularity since a video of a lady being stampeded by rabbits went viral in 2014. Since then, visitation to the island has increased thanks to other social media and videos featuring hordes of rabbits. But the island can't support the animals if there's significant human meddling. Nobody truly knows how the rabbits first arrived on the island. The Japanese government conducted covert tests of poisonous gas on Kunoshima in the early 30s. To conceal the operation, the notorious location, also known as Poison Gas Island, was removed from Japanese maps. Some believe the animals living on the island now are descendants of the original rabbits who were transported there to serve as test subjects for the chemical weapons. However, authorities assert that when the activity ceased, the test rabbits were put to death. There are several rumors that either a British couple raised the bunnies in 1971, or a local school did. There were around 300 rabbits living on the island in 2007, and now there are thought to be between 700 and 1,000. Number 18. The floating city that doubles as an oil rig. One of the world's most amazing villages is located on the Caspian Sea, 100 kilometers from Baku, the capital of Azerbaijan. 3,000 people reside in a fully operational metropolis that's connected by 300 kilometers of trestle bridges to a network of oil platforms and artificial islands. This is Nef Dalsari, also referred to as Oil Rocks, and it's located entirely within the biggest lake in the world, 55 kilometers from the lake's coast. Since ancient times, Azerbaijan has been renowned for its abundant oil reserves. Even in the 3rd and 4th century, there's proof of oil drilling and trafficking in petroleum. Old Arabic and Persian texts and the writing of renowned travelers like Marco Polo have historical records of the region's oil and natural gas seepage. The region was known as the Land of Fire by the Persians. The first oil tanker in history was one of the seven sinking ships that made up Neftel Sari's original foundation. 
Over the years, this increased to some 2,000 drilling platforms dispersed over a 30-kilometer circumference, connected by a 300-kilometer long network of bridge viaducts. Over these platforms, laborers constructed eight-story residential buildings, a beverage factory, a soccer field, a library, a bakery, a laundry, a 300-seat movie theater, a sauna, a vegetable garden, and even a park with trees that used dirt that was transported from the mainland. In its peak, this area was home to some 5,000 employees. Number 17. The highest altitude city in the world, La Riconada, Peru, the world's highest city. It was formerly believed that nobody could survive over 5,000 meters in elevation for a lengthy period of time. Having been around for more than 40 years, La Riconada directly challenges this. A life of this kind takes a heavy toll on the body. The amount of oxygen that's readily available at this altitude is around half of that at sea level. A first-time visitor who's normally healthy would probably experience shortness of breath after a brief stroll. However, for the locals, the physical impacts go much beyond simple altitude sickness. Both hypoxia, in which entire body parts or regions are deprived of oxygen, and hypoxemia, an abnormally low quality of oxygen in the circulation, can develop fast as a result of the high altitude. Chronic mountain sickness, which can cause a variety of conditions including tetanitis, heart palpitations, dizziness, lethargy, appetite loss, protracted headaches, sleep problems, disorientation, and more is another possibility. That should tell you something, as it's said that the climate is most comparable to the western part of Greenland. In fact, it's so far up that even trees are unable to grow, since it's above the tree line. Number 16. The city in Brazil with a very high rate of twin births. In the southern Brazilian community of Candido Godoy, which has 7,000 residents, an astonishingly high incidence of twin births occurs. Nobody knows why the rate is 10 times greater than the national norm. In an effort to unravel the enigma, a group of geneticists have been working with the community for a while, collecting DNA samples and learning about families. Candido Godoy has a 10% twin birth rate, which is much higher than the statewide average of 1.8 for Rio Grande do Sul. Eight out of the 17 twins investigated in one research were monozygotic, aka identical twins, which is slightly higher than the norm of 30%. In the latter half of the 20th century, many generations of twin births have been recorded. Twin births were first recognized in the early 20th century, when the first immigrants included 17 sets of twins. The majority of the population is of Polish or German descent, and many may trace their origin to the Hunsruck region of Germany, which has a higher than normal rate of twin formation. The rate in Kando Godoy may be due to the genetic founder effect, which states that the uncommon genetic features that happen by accident in a small group when they form a community would be more prevalent in their offspring than in the general population. Number 15. In Florida, there's a city with a huge concentration of sex offenders called Miracle Village. The so-called Miracle Village appears on the surface to just be another peaceful neighborhood but it actually hides a far darker reality. Indeed, registered sex offenders who are compelled to live apart from society make about half the inhabitants of the Florida community. The so-called town, which lies outside of Pohoki, is mentioned in a recent BBC program on the state's laws that sentence pedophiles and other sex offenders for life. One inhabitant of Miracle Village, Chris Dawson, tells the presenter how, after his 14-year-old girlfriend reportedly lied about her age, he was found guilty of having intercourse with her when he was 18 years old. Chris, who formerly played drums in a band, is quoted as saying of his offense, She lied to me about her age and had a fake ID. I was clueless. Since all of her friends thought she was 18, I did too. He feels that he merits a second opportunity to live a complete life, which the community is assisting him in doing. Chris has a new girlfriend, Lexi, 25, who he met in the neighborhood church and who was aware of his history as a sex offender when they started dating, since coming to Miracle Village. But she claims that after getting to know him better and being able to see past the label, she was won over, even if it made her think twice before they started dating. The neighborhood is now so crowded that some inhabitants must be accommodated in the neighboring town of Pohoki with the aid of local ministry. Number 14. Taos, New Mexico plays host to dozen of special Earth ships. A group of odd-looking buildings stand out in the otherwise bleak environment not so far from where New Mexico's Route 64 crosses the Rio Grande. 
Each of these 79 homes has a wall of windows that faces the south and is largely integrated into the surroundings. Even though the homes may resemble spaceships because of their rounded corners and vibrant can and bottle walls, the structures are really dubbed Earthships instead of spaceships. This community, also known as the Greater World Earthship Community, is situated not far from Taos and houses at least 130 residents full-time. Additionally, it operates as a public tourist center, an internship program, and an academy in collaboration with Western Colorado University under the moniker Earthship Biotexture. Nearly entirely self-sufficient, Earthship Biotexture aims to show you how to live off the grid as well. Michael Reynolds, an architect who still lives and works in the Taos community, developed the idea of the Earthship in the 1970s. Earthships are designed to harness renewable natural resources such as sunshine and rain and convert them into clean energy. The homes, which were constructed from recycled and natural materials, are built to provide food, water, and energy for its occupants all year long. Number 13. Monkey City of Delhi, India Overwhelmed city authorities in Delhi have petitioned India's Supreme Court to relieve them of the responsibility of monkey management due to the city's enormous and violent monkey population. The cause of the inundation is straightforward. People feed them. The Hindu custom of feeding monkeys on Tuesdays and Saturdays is based on the belief that they're the living embodiments of the reverend Hindu deity Hanuman. After being assaulted by monkeys, a Delhi deputy mayor died in 2007 after he fell from his balcony. This widely reported incident inspired the city to intensify its efforts to relocate animals to safer areas. However, these assaults continue. A 14-year-old girl was critically hurt after she fell from the roof of a residential building with five stories after being chased by monkeys. Number 12. Coober Petty, the Australian city where most of the inhabitants and the city are underground. There's a village in the Australian outback where chimneys emerge from the sand and large red signs caution tourists to avoid unmarked holes. Welcome to the subterranean city of Coober Petty. What may have been the world's largest opal mining enterprise when it started in 1916 has subsequently grown into an underground town that's safe from the area's 120 degree summers. The chiseled subterranean walls of Cooper Petty are home to complete bedrooms, bookstores, churches, and pubs, and the residents have no intention of stopping after a hundred years of habitation. Opal capital of the world is how the town is known. The aboriginal term for Cooper Petty loosely translates to white man in a hole. It's usual to feel temperatures of 100 100 degrees or higher, even in the shade. Unfortunately, there isn't much rain to shield residents and visitors from the sweltering heat. The hamlet is home to around 2,500 people, yet it has a strange otherworldly atmosphere. The subterranean residences have access to the internet, power, and water, just as regular residences. The absence of sunshine in Cooper Petty dwellings is the only distinction between normal residences and those there. Only a tiny airfield, bus tours, private vehicles, and the gone railway line between Darwin and Adelaide provide access to the town of Cooper Petty. Number 11. Spanish Village of Juzcar Juzcar, one of Spain's most distinctive towns, is situated in the autonomous province of Andalusia, 113 kilometers from the city of Malaga. The charming hamlet, which was formerly a classic white town, underwent a transformation in the summer of 2011 to become the first and only authorized Smurfs village in the whole world. The Smurfs movie promotion campaign was started by Sony Pictures with the help of this innovative idea. The community subsequently decided to paint the classic Pueblo Blanco a vivid blue. Although it was only meant to be a short-term endeavor, the concept was so warmly received that Juzcar even began to plan a number of celebrations and trade shows with a positive theme. Once the town underwent its dramatic metamorphosis into a world from a fairy tale, tourism and the local economy began to grow. Thus, after a referendum called by the mayor, the citizens decided to keep it that way. If you're wondering why Sony picked this tranquil Andalusian hamlet for their international premiere, you should know that Juzcar has a strong history of mycology, and the Smurfs are particularly well known for their love of mushrooms. Number 10. Longyearbyen Svalbard, the sunless city. In Svalbard, Norway, sound has unusual characteristics. The sound of each stride in the snow is loud, like a big crunch. Additionally, the jingle of metal bullets in your pocket, necessary defense against wandering polar bears, reverberates off the mountains, piercing the quiet of the north. The seemingly limitless expanse of treeless ground makes it hard to determine distances with the naked eye. Distances are also distorted. The little city of Longyearbyen, the most northerly community in the world with over a thousand residents, is located above the 78th parallel along a vast internal fjord. 
breaking the harsh severity of the Arctic. Winters are lonesome and cruel, with temperatures far below freezing and about three months full of continuous darkness, separated by several weeks of a faint twilight glimmer. Summers are long and happy, with months upon months of uninterrupted brightness, while winters are lonely and miserable. Nearly every resident of Long Yerbin congregates for the chaotic noon celebration known as Solfest, or Lightfest, on March 8th, the day the sun finally returns. Solfest preparations begin weeks in advance in the neighborhood primary school. The yearly sun mascot is drawn at a competition, and pupils begin to study traditional music specifically devoted to the sun. The primary school pupils are the first to leave the cozy confines of their classroom on the big day and begin the blizzarding journey to Solfest celebration location. Number 9. Elista, Russia, Chess City The greatest Buddhist city in all of Europe is located in Russia, in a place called Elista. Elista is also home to kings and queens, although not in the traditional sense. There are enormous temples and Buddhist statues as well. Chess City, an aesthetically and cultural distinctive neighborhood on the east side of Elista, is where, in the words of the New York Times, chess is king and the people are pawns. The megalomaniacal head of Russia's Kamalkia province and the president of the International Chess Federation, Kirsten Ilyumizov, who's a chess enthusiast, constructed Chess City in 1998. He claims to have been abducted by extraterrestrials with the crazy, idealistic mission of bringing chess to Elista. Ilyuzinov developed Chess City in a response to the aliens' advice precisely in time to hold the 33rd Chess Olympiad in style. Chess City, which has a swimming pool, a chess museum, a sizable open-air chess board, and a museum of Buddhist art, held several lesser chess tournaments after hosting hundreds of top grandmasters in 98. A monument of Ostap Bender, a chess-obsessed literary con artist, may also be located in the Chess City. Chess City was very divisive, even if it briefly brought Elista to the attention of the world. Cutting food subsidies to pay a massive 50 million structure for the temporary use of foreigners wasn't a popular notion with most of the people. Chess City was mostly abandoned right after the Chess Olympiad, which served as a symbol of the local government's mistaken objectives to the residents of Elista. Number 8. Bangkok's full name is the longest city place name in the world. Thailand's capital city is Bangkok. More than 10 million people live there. Bangkok is the sole major city in the nation. Small towns and villages make up the rest of the majority of Thailand. Thailand's capital moved to Bangkok in 1767. Since then, it served as the nation's cultural and historical hub. It's situated along the Chao Praya, one of the most significant rivers in Southeast Asia. Bangkok is also a significant hub for business. Over the past several hundred years, it's expanded into a sizable contemporary metropolis. The entire ceremonial name of the city of Bangkok is only abbreviated, according to the Guinness Book of World Records. What's the whole name? Get ready. Tap Krong Ratosin Mahakon Mahadluk Mahara Yad Pop Natap Masran Rachati Buram in Marwachat Wet Aman Watan Piman Witsakam Prasit Satkan Satkaya. Yes, I probably pronounced everything incorrectly. We'll just carry on calling it Bangkok for now. Number 7 Swastika City in Canada. Speaking of weird city names, here's a city called Swastika in Canada. Its name has been changed several times, but to no use. The discussion of this topic ebbs and flows periodically among residents, but they're determined to keep their history alive. People have been unable to decide for a long time whether to change the name of this town or keep it the same. Ontario, a province in Canada, is where Swastika City is situated. With the exception of the name, the town is calm and serene. The local government's attempting to draw visitors, but they're ignoring the hotel's original name and its tiny, homey setting. There were many hundreds of place names throughout the nation with German roots at the start of the 20th century, but practically all of them changed their names throughout the war. However, peaceful and tranquil Swastika rejected such an urge, citing that linguists believe the city's name has deeper linguistic roots, being an important symbol to many cultures prior to the Nazis. Number 6. Tomioka, Japan. Forbidden Zone. Ten years after a meltdown sprayed radioactive material all over the area, a portion of the town of Tomioka, which is roughly 10 kilometers from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, is still a no-go zone. There were roughly 3,000 people living in the no-go area, which makes up about 12% of the town of Tomioka. Even though the rest of the town in northeastern Japan was restored in 2017, it's still shuttered. To access the region during the day, one must get formal authorization from the municipal administration.
A portion of Yonomori was formerly a bustling commercial district with residences, stores, a 7-Eleven, and York Benimaru, a well-known local grocery chain. The region also has Yonomori Park, which is bordered by a cherry tree lined street and formerly a popular gathering place for locals to have a hanami celebration, picnic under the blooms, and stroll through a tunnel of blooming trees. Officials want to reopen this area of the no-go zone in 2023 as a unique rehabilitation location. The other half of the land is a nuclear waste dump, which is made up of a collection of radioactive material from all across the town, including tree limbs that have been cut down and black sacks carrying radioactive soil. The bags will eventually be delivered to a facility in Futaba and Okuma, two towns that house nuclear reactor and long-term waste storage. Number 5. Nagoro, Japan's Valley of the Dolls If not for Ayano Tsukimi, a talented doll maker, Nagoro, a small town in the Tokushima prefecture on Shikoku Island, one of the four main islands of Japan, would have remained a nameless dot on the map. She's been creating life-size dolls to inhabit her hamlet, whose population has been declining over time, out of sadness for her formerly bustling residential area losing its allure. Although other Japanese towns have been mentioned where artists have added scarecrows or dolls to liven them up, it's Nagoro that's attracted the attention of tourists. Ayano reportedly returned from Osaka to her natal town of Nagoro, following the death of her mother to care for her ailing father. She constructed a scarecrow about this time, around 2002, and placed it in the garden to scare off the birds who were stealing all the seeds. She gave it an old outfit from her father. She found it funny when a worker greeted the scarecrow without realizing that it wasn't her father. Thus, the seed of the concept was sown. In order to carefully put these scarecrow-like dolls across the community, Ayano has started making them. Some 350 dolls built by Ayano and her pals now exceed the human residents by more than 10 to 1. Number 4. Mat Mata Cave City in Tunisia Southern Tunisia's Mat Mata is a tiny Berber-speaking village. Some of the local Berbers occupy troglodyte structures buried beneath the ground. It had 2,116 residents in 2004. A sizable pit is dug out of the ground to build the customary village structures. Artificial caverns are then constructed around the pit's perimeter to be utilized as chambers. Some residences consist of many pits connected by trench-like tunnels. Except for roving nomadic tribes, established settlements in the region were not widely recognized until 1969. The troglodyte dwellings that were submerged by intense rains that year lasted for 22 days, which led to the collapse of many of them. A delegation was dispatched to the community center for the area of the town in Gabes in order to request assistance from the authorities. Although the visit was unexpected, assistance was given and Mat Mata's above-ground town was created. Only a small number of families relocated to the new surface residences, while the majority of the population continued to live in the newly constructed underground homes. The majority of the inhabitants in Mat Mata now depend on tourism and home-based folklore displays to make a living. As the residents of Luke Skywalker, his aunt Baru Lars and uncle Uncle Owen Lars on the planet Tatooine, the Hotel City Driss in Mat Mata was utilized as a filming site for Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope, in 1976. The hotel is fashioned like a traditional Berber underground troglodyte structure. The prequel movie Star Wars Episode II, Attack of the Clones from 2002 included it once more. Number 3. Colma, California, aka the City of the Dead. Colma, California is unique in that it was built as a cemetery for San Franciscans who passed away. The area in the Golden Gate metropolis that had been set aside for funerals started to become more expensive, and as a result, new burials there were forbidden, leading to the emergence of this city of the dead. 1,000 times more people are dead than alive in this lonely metropolis, and hundreds of thousands of bodies were even relocated there after being forced out of their final resting places in San Francisco. Some of the most well-known figures in American history are buried in Colma cemeteries, along with tens of thousands of others. The desire for space, a perennial issue for San Francisco, is what gave rise to this metropolis. Even long-time living residents of this city are being slowly driven out of their homes by dead interlopers looking to replace them. Yet, Colma remains the highly sought-after destination for San Francisco's most well-regarded corpses. Number 2. Witterer, Alaska lives under one roof. Imagine sharing a home with the majority of your town's residents, as well as all of your students. Imagine having access to your neighborhood post office, grocery store, and police station via an elevator. That's Janessa Lorenza's reality in Witterer, Alaska, where she shares a 14-story structure with around 85% of the town's 300 inhabitants. Jessica recorded a tour of the building she's lived in for the past seven years after seeing Witterer trend on TikTok. There's been almost 14 million views of the video. Most TikTok users seem to be curious 
in how the community manages to thrive under one roof, according to Lorenz, who claimed that the interest in Widderer has been overwhelming. Lorenz said that the structure was designed such that people would never have to leave if they choose not to. The majority of the children, including Lorenz, attend Widderer Community School, from kindergarten through grade 12, and there's a short trail from the building to each classroom. The school's website indicates that there are 60 students enrolled this academic year. Apart from Lorenz, there's just one other graduating senior. Number 1. World's Strangest City – Ashgabat, Turkmenistan Turkmenistan's capital and largest city is Ashgabat. In Central Asia, it's positioned halfway between the Karakum Desert and the Kopit Dag mountain range. It's also close to the border with Turkmenistan. Based on the Al Teke tribal settlement, the city was established in 1881, and it was designated as the capital of the Turkmen Soviet Socialist Republic in 1924. In 1948, Ashgabat earthquake left most of the city in ruins, but it's since been considerably rebuilt thanks to Saparumat Niyazov's White City Urban Regeneration Project, producing gigantic structures clad in pricey white marble. The city's high cost of living has been acknowledged since 2019, partly as a result of Turkmenistan's inflation and import problems. President Saparumat Niyazov started recruiting international architectural and construction companies after the country gained independence in 1991, most notably Boyos of France. These enterprises combined Greco-Roman architectural features like pillars with Niyazov's preferred Persian-style domes. Which of these cities do you want to visit the most? What's the strangest thing about the place where you live? Let us know in the comments below. Also check out the other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!